Hi everybody, uh, this is a video about the personal perspective of Henry Reynolds. Just filming it here with my puppy dog. So let's, let's get moving. All right, um, so first uh, we need to look at Reynolds' motivation. All right, um, and basically what he wants is to recognise the history of dispossession and violence to the Aboriginal people. Um, so. Uh, initially in his book he uses anecdotes and stories about his life in Townsville um, to engage the reader and to create a sense of empathy. So uh, in the first chapter we have the story about the unforgettable incident, the girls in jail. Um, we've got lots of other stories and anecdotes about the treatment of uh, Indigenous or Aboriginal people uh, in and around Townsville. Um, and this creates an empathetic introduction to the story. Um, Technically, the reader is supposed to be captivated and want to read on. Uh, there he is, smug. All right, so um, basically, Reynolds positions himself um, as an empathetic character, someone who understands uh, what's going on with other people and sees the good in everyone. Um, so this is illustrated through his childhood and early adulthood. Uh, he welcomed foreigners into the neighbourhood. He talks about how him and his sister used to um, sort of mimic them in their voices and were really happy and excited to see them around. Uh, in university, he paints himself as a radical. He was a bit of a communist. He challenged authority. Um, there are times when um, he even suggests that he was being followed by ASIO uh, early on. Um, so. Then there's uh, him and his wife Margaret moving to Townsville to make a difference. Okay, and that's very important. They weren't moving up there just to get a job. It was about you trying to help and make a difference. All right. So all of these kind of ideas and motivations represent him as someone who wants to present the truth as he knows it, and that's very important. Um, so to create trust within us, he's created empathy. Uh, in the first anecdotes, then he needs to create a sense of trust. Okay, he's someone who has studied. He's got a master's degree. He lectures at university. He holds seminars, all that kind of stuff. Um, he's always looking at logic and reason. There's always evidence to back up anything he says. Okay, um, he talks about the change in focus of his studies uh, from Australian history in general to focus on the frontier wars, um, and he really got very uh, local in his um, in his research and uh, looking at things. Pause then. Don't know if that worked or not. Um, and there's the use of historical documents for about four chapters, sort of in the middle of the book where it gets a little bit boring. He's always quoting newspapers, journals, and diaries um, to show that he's not just had an idea and he's running with it, he's actually got facts and information and sources to back this up. Um, so the main thing he wants to represent is the frontier wars um, as part of his research. So um, he juxtaposes passages from his old history books um, with what he sees now um, to show us that there was a, a definite underrepresentation of Indigenous people um, and the lack of mention of Aboriginals through Australian history. All right. Um, so he wants to set the record straight, really, and he thinks this is very important. Um, so uh, the two great debates that, that take place in terms of this book are the use of the word invasion and uh, war memorial recognition. Um, so. The use of the word invasion leads to a discussion of contrasting perspectives. That's between um, Reynolds and Blaney, Reynolds and Howard, John Howard, the Prime Minister, and Reynolds and Reynolds and educators um, and other politicians. Um, the War Memorial recognition is probably the most radical assertion or idea that Reynolds puts forward, and this leads to many suggesting he's way too radical, so all of his ideas are wrong. OK, um, so here's just a couple of slides with a whole lot of stuff about his political perspective um, in terms of invasion and settlement, um, Aboriginals killed on the frontier um, and the paradox that uh, the, the third dot point there is that we celebrate the unsuccessful invasion of, of um, 
of Gallipoli and the build, that's how we build our nation um, as opposed to the successful invasion of Australia in 1788. Um, so we'll basically leave you there. Um, just this slide here. You can pause these to have a look at the page numbers and things like that. And basically to end it all, um, many things have changed since 1965. Much has been achieved. Tolerance and understanding have broadened out. Bigotry is in retreat, but the racist past still weighs heavily on the present and might yet destroy any hope of reconciliation in this generation. Thank you from Charlie and myself.